What's going on everybody? It's Richard Koberger here, the Blue Collar Nerd. Welcome aboard the SS Release Notes. Let us begin our voyage. By the way, just FYI, I am getting over a cold right now, so if I sound a little off, that's why. So first, under the highlight section, we have an accounting note. So you can now see if a customer prefers to have their invoices and statements mailed, emailed, or both on the following sections. The customer page, the location page, the invoice, the project summary invoice, and the project invoice. Next, under Dispatch, Mobile, Jobs, and Projects, we have the star of the show, and that is individual appointment instructions. This is something that people have been asking for ever since appointments first came out. We always knew that we would need it, but it was going to take some extra time to build and we didn't want to hold up the entire feature. But now the time has come, it is available. So here's how this works. The main job summary that still exists, and that will show up on every appointment on the job. But when editing an individual appointment, you will now have this box to input individual appointment instructions. So on the mobile side, when a technician is looking at an appointment, here's what that looks like. So they will see the main job summary first at the top there, and then directly underneath that, they'll see any individual appointment instructions for that appointment. You'll also be able to see these on the job page when looking at the appointment section, and you can see them from the dispatch board when hovering over a job bubble. All right, next under Marketing Pro. Email campaigns can now be launched immediately. You can now have the campaign launch immediately or later that same day. And that's really handy for situations where you need to make some sort of time sensitive announcement. Next, under reporting, you can now filter the technician performance report template by job type. Pretty self-explanatory there, but that one's gonna be helpful to help drill into how technicians are performing on specific types of jobs to help you identify coaching opportunities. Next, we have enhanced report sharing and permissions. So report permissions and sharing functionality has been updated and it now works basically the same way that the permissions for custom dashboards work, which in my opinion is a lot better, more clear, more convenient. So a new share access button opens a list of all employees and company roles so you can quickly share reports. New warnings help you to identify and fix any missing permissions right away without digging into your settings. Reports 2.0 category-based permissions have been removed, simplifying the report access management. Permissions for legacy reports categories are preserved, by the way, that hasn't been touched. And the default report permissions by role has been updated. And by the way, those new defaults will only affect new employees that you make, not your existing employees. Okay, leaving the highlight section and onto the new section. API changes are coming. This one probably doesn't impact most of you, but I decided to include it because for people who like to get a little fancy with things like Zapier and really customize things you know, like me, this is pretty exciting. So we are working on a new set of APIs and we'll close out our current APIs, the V1 APIs in July of 2022. I'm pretty excited about this. This new version of the APIs is going to unlock a lot of new functionality. There is currently an integration environment where you can begin testing this if that's something that you're interested in or need to do for whatever reason. And you can learn more about that by checking out the link that is in the actual release notes. All right, next under the improvement section under accounting. You can now export advances and deposits into general ledger accounts. So now you can export advances and deposits into any GL account instead of exporting them as payments. Advances and deposits exported as normal payments reduce your accounts receivable without representing the work that you are liable for, whereas advances and deposits exported into GL accounts don't reduce your accounts receivable. Great update there. I've definitely seen that exact concern come up in the Service Titan Masterminds group a couple of times, so this should address that. Okay, next under forms, we have some new technician smart fields for PDF forms. So smart fields are those things that auto-populate information into your forms. And again, to be clear, we're talking about PDF forms here where you upload a PDF with certain codes in the fillable sections. So the following information about a technician can now be added to a PDF form from a timesheet using smart fields. Their name, email, phone number, license number, time dispatched, time arrived, time done, time canceled, total duration on the job, and labor type. And there are also new smart fields related to service materials and equipment. So you can now retrieve the name, code, description, and price for material, equipment, and services from an invoice. All right, next under equipment, there is a new installed on date calculation for newly installed equipment. So previously, the install date on a piece of equipment would default to the date that that equipment was added to the invoice. But that date is not necessarily the date that you installed it, and in fact, sometimes it can be pretty far away from the date that you install it. 
And so that is no longer the date that it uses. It now uses the job completion date as the default installed on date. Next under inventory, you can now choose to replenish items from their primary vendor or warehouse. So when you select an items replenishment source in inventory and replenishment, you can now choose default replenishment vendor or default replenishment source. This allows you to replenish an item from the desired source without needing to select the actual primary vendor or warehouse. Basically allowing you to reset everything to its default replenishment source without having to go in and reset them one by one. All right, next under price book. Price book columns are now sortable and resizable. So when browsing the tables in your price book, you can now resize the columns, so make them wider or narrower. And you can also sort the table by certain columns. For example, maybe you wanted to see everything sorted from highest price to lowest price. Next, there is now a new material section in Pricebook Connect provider catalogs. So materials in provider catalogs now appear in their own section in Pricebook Connect, separate from services and equipment. And finally, under reporting, we now have a previous year option in the date filters. So the new date filter option last year allows you to filter reports and dashboards from January 1st through December 31st of the previous year. Definitely handy. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Thank you for cruising with me. Here's a list of everything I skipped. Feel free to pause the video here. And if any of that sounds interesting to you, please check out the full release notes. Be sure to hit like if you liked this video and found it valuable. Be sure to subscribe to Service Titan's YouTube channel if you've not done that already. Hit that bell icon so that YouTube notifies you anytime we upload a new video. And leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Your engagement through likes, comments, and subscriber numbers are the ways in which my success is measured. Appreciate it. Peace.